you know, if we're defining from an engineering standpoint what an edge-centric architecture might look like, the, the first component would be a central management hub. So imagine if instead of having to manually configure a device to run a machine learning model, you can instead define a configuration with the model itself, any model-specific dependencies, and underlying system-level dependencies um, that, that you need to run that model on a device. Imagine if you can define that configuration once and send that out to your entire fleet of devices. It makes things a lot easier. So once we have that in place, you know, another pillar um, that's really important is that we want this, this architecture to work on any device. Um, so when we start to work with, you know, some of these small form edge devices Seth mentioned, you know, IoT devices, um, they, they come built with an ARM chip. Um, and so we want to make sure that our architecture is agnostic of chip, ARM or AMD, um, and that there are any um, specific you know, data transfer protocols that we account for. For example, in, in manufacturing IoT, the, the industry standard is they use MQTT. Um, we want to make sure that the architecture we build can work with MQTT, gRPC, REST, you know, et cetera. Um, a third requirement is more self-explanatory. Uh, we, we want our architecture to um, yield low latency inferences. And you know, performance matters all the time, regardless of where you're running machine learning, but especially in some edge cases. You, know, you can think of navigation use cases, AI use cases, and, and smart um, cars, um, you know, security uh, or perimeter security, all requires that, that rapid inferencing. And then finally, we want a requirement to be that this architecture we build can operate in a completely disconnected environment. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, Steph, in your experience, have you ever worked on a project that required a completely disconnected model? In other words, deploy a model yeah. to a device once, and you know, um, it needs to operate uninterrupted, um, kind of very smoothly in, in a completely network um, restricted environment. Yeah, I mean, one of the spaces that has the least network connectivity possible is underwater. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever tried syncing a Bluetooth device while you're uh, 20 feet down. Um, it's not gonna happen. And it's because water is not very friendly to radio waves. They're just way too high frequency and the water molecules just do a number on them. Uh, in fact, it's, it's actually kind of interesting how uh, ships talk to underwater autonomous vehicles, um, AUVs. They have acoustic modems where they're basically using sound data to package up information and they're able to send the sound data because the sound travels through water much better than um, you know radio waves. Uh, but that is super slow. If any of you uh, are you know privileged enough to not have to have dealt with dial-up, um, you're lucky because those of us who lived through the dial-up phase know how long it took to load a single web page. That's basically the technology you're stuck with underwater. So if you want to use machine learning, one of the uh, one of the projects we're working on today is to help. Um, help one of our customers basically deploy target recognition models onto AUVs so they can just operate completely independently. So not only is it slow, you know, slow, but in a lot of cases, it's just there's just no way to connect. Um, these devices are designed to like go hundreds of meters underwater, go do some stuff, um, you know, sometimes reconnaissance, sometimes, uh, you know, ocean surveys, and then they have to come back up to the surface to get a satellite link to be able to transmit what they found. So you need a solution where you can just run that model and know it's gonna be bulletproof and uh, keep doing its job no matter what happens. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great example, thanks. Um, so why don't we talk about you know, the recipe for actually building this type of architecture? Yeah, so you, know, you take all those kind of design patterns into account that we just talked about. Um, we, we have a perspective that there's a, a way to approach this that's edge centric. So rather than thinking about things in terms of there's the cloud and we're sending things out, trying to think about the edge devices first and then creating a system where we can then correspond, interact with, kind of configure those devices. But we're really thinking about the edge device from, a, from first principles. So if you tackle this edge centric AI approach, it can really help manage the chaos that comes with dealing with all these random devices. So the key ingredients will include a few items. One, containers. Um, we found containers to be one of the best ways to make sure that when you create a machine learning model, it's got all the stuff, all the random libraries and tidbits and scripts and data files and assets you need, all in that container in an immutable format. Basically means that if that container works, it's gonna always keep working because the dependencies are all locked inside. That provides a lot of flexibility to be able to take your models and run them on a range of different devices. One of the other pieces is a central model store. So you need a, you need a way to host that container and then 
allow edge devices when they're able to to reach out and grab those container images basically get a hold of those models again from an outside in standpoint edge centric um, you're going to need multiple devices one or more devices um, what's interesting though is this can this isn't just small single board computers this can include cloud and on-premise resources and this is a really great way of getting around the challenges associated with multi-cloud compute when you have workloads or scenarios where you've got some stuff in Google, some stuff in Amazon, some stuff, some stuff in Azure, for big companies, this is not uncommon. You can use Edgecentric to basically remotely process your data in all these locations using the same models. Um, you need some kind of container runtime. Um, we're big fans of Docker, so uh, we'll be talking about Docker today, but it could be Containerd, there's other runtimes out there. And then some kind of API, um, REST or gRPC for high speed, low latency, kind of rapid response. Uh, gRPC is fantastic, but it's a little bit less user friendly um, to, to work with and look at. So for scenarios where maybe you're just working offline because of network um, speed, but latency is not super important, a REST interface is, is fantastic. But with these five ingredients, you can create a pretty robust edge centric solution um, that has a number of benefits. The first benefit um, is really that it provides uh, incredible low latency, high speed performance, because you're moving your compute right to the data. You're putting the, the computing resources right next to the data. And whether that is a Spark cluster in another region, um, you know, another continent away, or whether it's, you know, this little camera attached here to my wall, which we're gonna take a look at in a second, we're doing the inferences and it has to travel about 11 inches um, from the camera right to the sensor that's doing the, the processing. That's awesome. Secondly, it's really efficient with resources. Um, you can take advantage of machine learning uh, with a lot of modern tools today and get those models quite small, quite efficient, um, quite you know, limited in size, and then distribute those models to run on lots of smaller devices. That can actually be not only uh, efficient with the hardware that you have, but it can be cost efficient. Rather than taking advantage of really huge, expensive clusters, you can minify your models and take this edge-centric approach to distribute and run it on a bunch of small computers. This could be people's workstations, um, laptops, uh, small edge devices. You have a lot more flexibility with how you decide you want to use um, your compute budget. It's resilient on slow networks, as we talked about, um, and it's not just for single board computers. You really get to take advantage of the fact that all of these models can run on any other computer you decide to connect up to your fabric of edge devices.